welcome to today's video. This is a creative challenge video and today I will be talking about how what my journey through college. I started my college career in level two media with my tutor Karen Bird and Rob Williams. It's a pretty good and easy course to start off with. I was first told when I went to the opening evening when I first spoke to them, when I first met my first tutors. Um, they said to me going into level two instead of jumping into level three would be easier to get more knowledge into how the college works. So in my first year I made my own little website. I made my own magazine in a group. I had a group of four um, and it was very stressy should I say making my own magazine it was to be based on the college and welcoming other people into the college we made our own stop-motion videos with Karen Bird we had uh, some clay characters which we initially had to draw um, and then with the clay characters we used green screens in the TV studio to make an animation and it was really really fun really interesting it was different and by then um, especially with stop motion it was interesting to me because at the time I was doing YouTube videos uh, for animation as well as gaming uh, the gaming aspect didn't really work but in terms of the animations it coped really well it was really good and obviously I'll be putting some overlay in footage uh, b-roll footage is what it's called over this so you can you can see what I did and, and to be fair it was something I was really interested in at the time I still am interested but I stopped last year because I had a lot of work that I needed to do. I recently had changed jobs and therefore I couldn't do any more animations. I didn't have enough time to do that. So I stopped doing that, focused my college and my work career first and then continued from there. Whether I'll go back to YouTube or not, I don't fully know. With Karen we did some cutting down of films and videos to create meaning. So for an example with this we used Tom Cruise in the Mission Impossible 2 when he's on a cliff. Uh, and we cut it down into different sequences to sort of create the meaning. Why is this here? Why is that there as an example? Why is he hanging on a cliff? Why is that sort of music in the background? We did this with Frozen, we did this with a couple of other movies as well and as much as a lot of people at the time were saying that's one way how to ruin a film, well they were, they were right but it was quite interesting to know what every bit of detail meant within a video. So now we move on to level 3. Now level 3 was a completely different ball game. In level 3 we had a lot of people leaving the college. Um, we started off our group with at least 29 students and we finished the year with only 9 students. We had a lot of people leaving in that course group. Uh, so and so that we almost had to be conjoined with another group. So in level 3 we made a music video. Now. With the footage I'm going to show now, even though it shows me awfully in a vest top, um, it was a good music video. I had my own idea of doing an Ollie Murs music video, but we had to do it in a group and the Ollie Murs idea that I came up with wasn't ideally the best idea to come up with. In fact, it was more the fact that it was basically me as a character jumping off the Colour Cambry building, which is wasn't a very good idea at all. With the music video we made, it was a completely different genre and music to what I've heard before, but I was playing the role of the drunken dad with the kids, and obviously it never ended well. But it was something that I really enjoyed doing. The quality of the video was really good, the footage was spot on. I helped with transporting equipment in my own vehicle at the time. Um, location wise, it was really, really good. We had a good few days. It was funny, we had a lot of fun, and it was something that i do again. But well, we did quite a few things with um, Edward Swindell. So, Edward is a director who made the film Dark Signal. We edited two parts, or two sequences of his film. One was in a radio station, and the other one was in a rented accommodation where bailiffs were taking equipment and stuff away from this Polish woman. She had no money, she needed to find money, and she had a laptop and a TV. And the TV, it's really important to my son. Took off her to pay for 
basically her accommodation that she hasn't paid for. Now we did a few funny filmmaking activities with this course as well. We did one where it was like an interview, st well boss styled interview sort of thing. It failed because I started laughing at the end but it was something I found very funny to re-watch after making it. Um, I also did something very similar to this in the year after because I thought it was really really funny to recreate and for a one minute video I thought it was it was funny. Sky. <laughs> now I also did another weird video with Aiden who's one of my uh, friends in, in the class um, we did it on a, a Donald Trump and we had to edit as weirdly and as crazy as possible with this as well. We wanted to do something that was just full of edits. It was over edits, should we say. We had a genre that we had to pick. We were given a genre instead of anger, to which with this we kind of over edited. <laughs> Now we also did a creative challenge with this course as well, it was near the end of the college course. Um, with this we just wanted to make a minute video on something funny and creative essentially. And at the time it was the election between Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May. So we thought well let's try and help people choose and make the right choice for them, for the country. So, Jeremy Corbyn. I want a Labour government that isn't closing hospitals, that isn't so underfunding schools that when the parents take the children back in at the start of the summer term, they say goodbye to the children and in return they get a letter saying please help us fund the school because the government isn't providing us with the money for the books and the things the children need. Or Theresa May. For a stronger Britain, that will enable us to secure that more stable and secure future for this country and take the right long-term decisions for the future. It's about strong and stable leadership in the national interest. Now, in level three, year one, we also had to start doing photography. Now, as you can see in the background, I know photography is a lot about my car, but at the time I didn't have a car, so I couldn't really do the amount of photography that I did today anyways of my car or locations such as that. We were given a brief that I sort of panicked with and my tutor will back me up on this where um, obviously I um, needed to take some photos of a day in the life of a person. So I thought right okay nobody I know likes to have photos taken of them going here there everywhere. So I was in a mad panic, I had a week to go before I had to send in 15 detailed photos of the life of a person, or a day in the life of a person. So I said to my mum, I said, right, I need to do 15 photos of you in the day in the life of you. So um, obviously at the time my mum was attending university doing an injustice law course, so she had a lot to do during her day, so I thought it would be a good idea to ask her to see if she'd be able to do it and luckily enough she did because she knew that I was in a desperate situation that I needed someone to record because I was going to ask my best friend at the time but she didn't like to uh, be taken photos of. One of the most funnest parts of that year, uh, with level, level 3 year 1, was um, presenting an idea that was basically a repeated video that gets shown in a gallery. Now this gallery used to be JJB Sports but is now called Indig Inn. Um, so we had to come in a group, make a weird horror video genre, which is what we wanted, is horror. Um, that looped over and over again because at the time before then we had a trip going down to Manchester um, to have a look at some galleries down there and we were able to see other people's work and other people's videos so we thought we'd come up with an idea that we saw very similar 
to when we went to Manchester um, and we made this horror video from a house near Denby. It was an abandoned house. It was abandoned for 30 years. We found a dead sheep in there. We found broken walls. There was rubble all over the floor. There was still a fridge in there. There was still a bed in there. It was really creepy, but it was a good environment to what we wanted to do. It was really, really creepy what we did with this video. But I think the effect that we gave when we put it in the gallery and in the in the Gein was really, really cool. Uh, and I think we got a lot of publicity for that as well. It was really fun to make. It took us a full day. We had to pick up people. It was raining. We went, travelled afar in a little tiny convoy. And we, we, we met up. We parked the cars. We took the equipment up a hill. We saw this house and we started recording. And I tell you what, it was really, really fun. And I enjoyed doing it. Now we had to do another recording as well, which was more like, it was a skill build. Now with the skill build video, we had to make a sort of showreel video, or a, uh, well it's for, for a showreel, which we, I'll get onto that after. But we had to make a video that consisted of about a minute or so, and it had to be sort of past times. Not contemporary, but it had to show like the past, it had to be looked old, it had to look old, it had to basically remind you of memories, like if you've passed away you remember your life before you'd passed away or something like that. Um, so it's just showing the past life of the person. We made that video, it didn't take us long as a skill build should and it took us about a week to make, but we also made that as well and as you'll see there's a bit of footage of it here. <laughs> Now going back to showreel, like I briefly mentioned earlier, we all had to make a showreel. Uh, now a showreel is basically, if you went for an application for a job in filming or editing, you'll have a showreel of the work that you've done, which you give off to them as a sort of portfolio of the work that you have done in the past. Multicam was quite fun. It was something different, something that gave you a bit of an environmental experience. Uh, we had to go in the TV studio, we had to make a game show of our own and we had to make it all by ourselves. So we had to have three camera people, runners, we had a floor manager, we had a director, we had uh, a sound person as well as everything else as well. That's including transitions as well from camera to camera, uh, as well as obviously we needed the director who was planning and moving things about everywhere, whatever he or she pleases. Um, and we made a game show in the TV studio I had various different roles that we tried. Uh, we had to do, I think, at least two main roles um, to get marked on. Uh, in which case, we had a lot of planning, a lot of prepping before this, a lot of practicing as well. Um, but it was something that part of it was very, very interesting. I was, to, I was able to gain an environmental aspect of what it would be like under, let's say, the chase, a TV show, or something like that. It's very, very similar. Um, but it gave me a lot of an insight of what environmentally it would be. Um, you know, so if I went to go in a camera roll position, I'd fully understand what the environment is going to feel like because I've already been in that sort of environment under a test sort of environment as well. Now we're moving on to level three, part two, so year two essentially. Now even though level one, we have to do a lot of website work as well, of basically how to make a website, how to make a video. It was more website based. With year two, I found it much easier. It was a more enjoyable, less stressful year, should I say. Obviously, we had more people in our classes this time, and a lot, a lot of people left this year either. Uh, there was a lot of people who I got along with as well uh, in this year as well, because last year there wasn't many people to talk to, and the people that were left, I didn't really talk to. Um, but with this year, it was a lot more enjoyable, it was a lot more fun, and we started off the year on such a very positive note. Now, with level three, we had to make a corporate video. Now, we had the option of doing a promotional video or a corporate video, and this is for a skill build. So, we went to Andy, who is in charge of the TV studio, and we thought, right, Andy, we need to do, we have to do a corporate or promotional video. And he said, well, what do you want to do? I said to him, with my group as well that we had at the time, 
that we wanted to do an instructional sort of promotional or corporate video on how to use the TV studio or how to use something of the TV studio. Now Andy pointed to us that he's got a new crane. Now originally when he said crane I wasn't thinking of the um, the constructional cranes that you get on new buildings. It was more in um, the camera on a crane. So when you're getting in sweeping in shots, it's not done by a person flying in the air, it's done by a crane that's held by a person or a robot that's been controlled by a remote control. Now the problem I had with corporate and promotional video is obviously when you're learning these things you get a bit confused. Now with me, I accidentally made a, docu a documentary in my actual marked work. Now when we had to make this video, we um, well, I had to make it properly. This isn't the uh, skill build, I'm now going on to the actual marked work. Um, a mate of mine started work in a very recent restaurant, or bistro should I say. It's called Nice Bites in the People's Market in Chester. Um, I knew the guy as well, he was very friendly. He, honestly, he couldn't be a much nicer guy. We had a few laughs, it was quite cool. And me and my group went down there at least five times to get our recording done. Now the first time we did we recorded quite a bit of footage, edited together and we found out the sound was rubbish and it looked more like a documentary video than it did in a, in a, a promo or a or a corporate video. So we thought, right, okay we'll go back and we'll start again from scratch and we'll make it look a lot better. So that's what we did. We went back again and again and again to make sure we got it right. We brought the appropriate equipment with us and we recorded quite a lot of things as well as we gave Stuart Fenley, the owner of Nice Bites, we gave him a script we asked him for him to adjust it and then obviously add or even if to, he wanted to recreate that script to his needs he was able to do that and he performed really well in fact I'm pretty sure, I'm just going to say this now that this is my most impressive work Hi, I'm Stuart. Welcome to Nice Bites. We've been here for 18 months. We've been doing really well on TripAdvisor. We're rated restaurant number 15 or 16 out of 400, which is absolutely brilliant for us. Small little restaurant at the back of Chester Market to be beating some of the absolute Goliaths in Chester. But anyway, let's talk to you about some of the stuff that we do here. We do sweet potato fries, we do halloumi fries, we do a couple of street food specials, we like to do American deli sandwiches, we do cut to order salads, cut to order wraps, grilled sandwiches, Anything tasty, sometimes healthy, sometimes guilty pleasures, but we do it all in here and it's all freshly made by us. So you get to watch it for yourself right here in our kitchen. Uh, we're open 9 to 5, Monday to Saturday. We get all of our produce fresh from the market daily. So we use our market butchers, our market greengrocers and our market cheese wedge. And you just can't get any fresh. We make our own spices, seasonings, rubs. It's unlike anything else you can find in Chester. I can guarantee you can go to any restaurant in Chester and you won't find what you find in here. You've got friendly people serving you, you've got people who love what they're doing, cooking for you, and all around it's just a brilliant little place to come and eat. So get yourself down to Nice Bites in Chester at the back of Chester Indoor Market and come and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it, you come and see for yourself. Now after this we did, with James, our tutor, uh, a one minute wonder idea. So basically it was run off um, YouTube. Now I have a lot of knowledge on YouTube uh, as I was a YouTube person. I used to do gaming, I used to do animations um, that I wanted to do on YouTube. So I quite I, I knew the brief. When I was given the brief, I had a lot of knowledge of what was needed. There's a lot of people who don't like watching over one minute videos because they just want to watch something and then be done with it. And if it's funny, they'll repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And that's how you get revenue. So that's how you get money from YouTube slash Google because Google now is on YouTube. We then went on from making that pitch to making the actual video. Now, it was very similar to the video I made the year prior uh, where it was like an interview sort of styled video. Uh, however, it was more full of memes. Now, this one was also full of memes, but it was also very funny. It was meant to be more comedy than memes. <laughs> um, so, with this video, we made an interview style. We were using the same room as well, coincidentally. We were using the same room as what we were using last year. Uh, but with this one we made a more serious interview, in which case I didn't burst out laughing this time, however I'm pretty sure we've got a few outtakes of them. Uh, it was quite funny and 
it was enjoyable. It was one of those times where you can sit down, you can relax, you can laugh at things, you can have a joke and it's funny. You'll watch it over on the edits and you'll think, what the hell was I thinking? Oh, I gonna be Sounds like a good Take a seat, please, Mr. Smith. God, traffic out there is mental. So, Mr. Smith, uh, what can you tell me about yourself? <sighs> Not much. I don't have any work experience, but I desperately need the money. Mm, what for? <sighs> I need it to get wasted, man. Alcohol, nights out, the lot. <clears throat> Contempt, right. Um, can you tell me your weaknesses, please? Oh, it's, G it's Jimmy. I have to take this. Jimmy! What's up? Mr. Smith, why should I employ Dick? Uh, not much. I'm just doing this. Put the phone Interview, down. whatever. It's interview, whatever. Put it down! How do you think this interview went? Honestly? I think I'm going to Mr. Smith, can you just vacate the area, please? I've had enough. So I'll get a call back, right? No. So with this part, we had to make uh, an interview with someone who was famous, or a celebrity, or something like that. So I thought, I know a friend who I've only just recently met who owns his own barber shop. Uh, and he owns it on the Plassey, which used to be some uh, horse stables, but he's created it into a little mini hairdresser shop. So I thought I'd go ask him and see if he'd like an interview done on how he's created his business. Uh, as he's very proud of his business as well, so they uh, add. So he said yes. We had a few difficulties trying to arrange it at the time because we only had a short time base. Um, and we recorded the video. We had quite a few bleepers on there, which I would admit I have added on YouTube myself. Uh, but in terms of where how the interview was conducted, I thought it was really good. However, we only had one camera hiccup. Uh, it was my own personal camera that I thought, oh, I'll bring it just in case we need another camera. Which we did need another camera, but the quality wasn't as good as what you would get on the camera that I'm recording this with today. Now, also in this year, we also had to do an anti-smoking advert. Now, this anti-smoking advert was a bit difficult, but originally I thought it was a pretty easy idea. So we wanted to make an advert video based on a life balance, which we were going to base it off a bank balance instead. But this bank balance, you can see, goes from like near £100 and it keeps going down every time you have a cigarette. Now, the problem we had with this advert is we couldn't show anybody using a real smoke cigarette. So instead we used a vapour. And by using a vapour, a bit like what that is there, we made a video where it was faked. But, when you look at it on the edits, it's real. Uh, however, you don't actually see who's smoking on the video. Which is good, because that was what was in the brief. We can't record anyone using or promoting cigarettes. So, uh, by doing this, anyways, we had a life balance. I put like £100 in, and every time you use a cigarette, it'll go down and down and down. So it nearly goes to zero. And then what the character does in the video is he throws away the packet of cigarettes and then he gains a penny every step he walks away from that bin. Now we also did a documentary in this year as well. We've done a lot of things throughout this college um, and this documentary part was based on cyberbullying as well as bullying in general. There's more to do with social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter pages and all sorts of bullying. Uh, it, I, it was based on with my sister. My sister had a few issues in school with social media. Um, so I sort of thought that that would be a good idea to include. So originally I was going to interview my sister, but then I thought that the situation got so much worse, I thought it was morally not right to record my sister talking about her problems, especially when they're so raw. So we made a video instead of just social bullying uh, and the wrong use of social media in general. So we came as a group, we spoke to a few people, we spoke to 
uh, student services in Colin Cambria, as well as my old youth worker that I used to personally speak to in your school, Brunel in school. And it was very good to, you know, to catch up with Caroline, the youth worker, because um, I, hadn't sp I haven't spoken to her for three years, which is quite mind-boggling to know that I haven't spoken to her for three years, so I didn't know what to expect when I first met back up with her. Um, but we were able to discuss a lot of te uh, uh, contemporary issues with how the world is working around social media so on that aspect the video was very purposeful now we had to make our own stop motion again now obviously I've learned from stop motion in level 2 uh, how to make stop motion so I had a problem I was ill a lot as well as I didn't have a lot of time so when it came to recording um, animations which we made in stop motion we did a lot of work into making a cake. Now we tried doing a, making a cake, we brought a camera with us but the battery died on it so we couldn't use it so instead we used a different camera without a tripod so it was inconsistently out of place so in terms of every shot the camera was moving so it didn't look right. So if we wanted to put it in a consistent way we couldn't really do so because the camera was wobbling all over the place. So, everything got a bit tense, so we thought, right, okay, why not, why not make a cup of tea? So we thought, that's a pretty good idea, because by making a cup of tea, it doesn't really take long to do, and if we have consistently bad camera issues, we can always remake a cup of tea, whereas when we've made a cake, we've already used the ingredients, and by doing that, it's going to be cost more, it's going to cost us more. So by making a cup of tea, we know we're going to get it right. It's not going to be the best thing in the world, but to get the mark, it's pretty good. Now we had a bit of an issue with single cam. We had a single cam production to make. Uh, we were going to base it off my life so far, which basically means, or basically was made for, essentially, uh, one person to remember his past life experiences. I, he's going up to his, um, he's going up in class and he's going to try and talk to the class about his past, basically like a life lesson. Um, and he tries to talk to everyone else because he's shy about his life, essentially. So he's in a group just talking about his life. Um, but we tried doing that. We had a few issues with the camera and I was supposed to be director. However, I didn't have enough evidence in my role to do that. So what I did instead was make my own video, my own single camera video with my friends, uh, of me robbing my own car. So here it is. My life has always had its ups and downs. There's always a reason why things happen, right? I keep telling myself this very line. Remember, things happen for a reason. I've always seen my life as a fun opportunity. Going somewhere quiet is something that feels peaceful. One place you can exclude yourself from the mountain. cleverest of people do things wrong and ultimately get caught. So, that's what I've done in college in three years. It seems like a lot of work. It is a lot of work and there is a lot more paperwork involved than originally first thought, but throughout that it has been a very knowledgeable experience throughout those three years I've learned a lot without being in college for those three years or without being in this particular course I wouldn't know what to do properly level three is a lot more hands-on a little bit more difficult there's a lot more writing involved but if you've been in level two you're able to you're able to know what you're about to do you know the facilities you've explored the college you know what you want to do 
and it should be easy and straightforward. So that's my life in college guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thanks for the year in college. Mm -hmm.